one-dimensional forces, problems one through four, elevator type problems. Tom, Thanksgiving turkey, figured he'd avoid Thanksgiving dinner by sitting the hayloft of the barn, which is 53.6 feet above the barn floor. But he got hungry as he waited. He used the hayloft rope and pulley system to pull a 14.2 kilogram bag of bird seed up to the loft. If Tom T. Cube pulled with a mighty force of 185.1 newtons, how long did it take to get the bag of seed up to the loft? First, free body diagram, there are only Y forces. Force of tension, because he's pulling on a rope. Um, and the pull is 185.1 newtons. And of course, the force of gravity, which you're going to figure out using mg. We're trying to find the time it takes to get it to the loft. We know the distance is equal to 53.6 feet. Feet. We'll have to work with that later. So we have a mass also of 14.2 kilograms. Having the mass allows us to find the force of gravity. So we can go ahead and plug that in down below and get the force of gravity. Uh, mass times little g, negative 9.8, gives us a force of gravity of negative 139.16 newtons. We now have the force of gravity, the force of tension. We can look at the x and y summations. There are no x forces, so I'll just leave that side blank. Um, on the y side, of course, we have the general formula. Um, F net is equal to the sum of all of the individual forces. And then F net is equal to the force of tension plus the force of gravity, which are the two individual forces in this case. We can plug in our numbers to find the total force net. Um, so force net equals 185.1 minus 139.16. Our the total net force is 145.94 newtons. We can now use that net force to find the acceleration. Acceleration is equal to F net divided by the mass. Put in that equation, plug in our numbers, and we get the acceleration equal to 3.235 meters per second squared. But that doesn't get us our time. So at time, we have to use the kinematic equations, which means we have to change that 53.6 feet into meters. So I'm going ahead and showing my dimensional analysis. I work with my units first. Um, I can convert feet to inches, inches to centimeters, centimeters to meters. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the arithmetic. Uh, first, making sure my units all cancel out and everything is going to be okay, and the last unit standing is indeed meters. Then I can do my arithmetic and get 16.324 meters. Still want to find that time, so I'm going to have to use my kinematic equations. Um, with the information I have, the df equals di plus vit plus one-half at squared is probably the best route to go. So I write my kinematic equation down. I write down my inferences, vi is equal to zero, the bag starts on the floor, not moving, and di equals zero. Plug in my numbers and solve for t. Um, first I get t squared, and then I take the square root and get t of 3.177 seconds. Voila, will we be done with this one? Problem two finds Tom now at the water tower place in Chicago. Um, he now has a mass of 42.8 kilograms, and he steps on an elevator and sees himself standing on a scale for some strange reason. When the elevator starts moving upwards, Tom T. Cubed is amazed to have the scale read 443.5 newtons. What is the acceleration of the elevator? Well, first I draw my free body diagram, and of course the only forces acting on him are the normal force, or you could call it the force of the scale pushing up, and that's 443.5 newtons, and the force of gravity. Since I have his mass, I'm going to use uh, mg to figure out what the force of gravity is. It's a negative 419.44 newtons. There are no x forces, so I'm going to leave that side blank. Um, on the y side, f net is equal to fn plus f sub g. So now I'm going to go ahead and calculate what my net force is by plugging in my numbers. So f net is equal to 443.5 newtons minus 419.44 newtons, or f net equals 24.06 newtons. So now I'm going to use f net equals ma to find the acceleration. Um, and I plug in the mass of Tom cubed, and I get the acceleration of 0.562 meters per second squared. 
Again, we have Tom T cubed in an elevator at Water Tower Place, and he again has a scale reading, which is way less now. So once again, we start by drawing the free body diagram. We have the force of gravity and the normal force, which could also be called the scale force. And we have his mass, which is slightly different than the last problem. Um, and we're going to use that mass to find um, his force of gravity after I write down what the scale was reading, 210.1 newtons. And I'm hunting for the acceleration. And now I'm going to have my x and y forces. Again, there are no forces in the x direction. Fy, uh, F net equals Fn plus Fg. Um, Fg, I'm going to calculate using the 39.3 and negative 9.8. Um, and I'm going to get that number of negative 385.14 newtons. I'm going to plug in my numbers to find the net force. Very similar to the last problem, only different numbers. And I'm going to um, get a net force. Net force is 175.04 newtons. Plug that into F net equals Ma. Um, using the mass of Tom T cubed, and I get an acceleration of negative 4.45 meters per second squared. In this case, we have a negative acceleration. Tom's gone. A student stands on a bathroom scale in an elevator at rest on the 64th floor of the building. The scale reads 648.9 newtons. As the elevator moves upward, the scale reading changes to 951.6 Newtons. What is the elevator's acceleration? This is a different kind of a problem. We've got two situations. We have when the elevator is at rest and when it is moving. And what we're really concerned about is what's moving. So why do we have the at rest information? Well, the at rest information tells us that the net force is zero at that point. The acceleration is zero. And so the scale has to be equal and opposite to the force of gravity. So that at rest information gives us the force of gravity of negative 648.9 newtons. Now we're really concerned about when it's, the scale is moving, so we're going to have that normal force of what it reads while moving, or while accelerating, and that's at 951.6 newtons while the elevator is accelerating, which is what we're interested in. So we're going to get our x and y forces. Again, there are no x forces, they're all y, so f net is equal to um, the sum of the individual forces, and the individual forces in this case are F net equals Fn plus Fg. You could also say the force of the scale if you wanted to. Um, I can plug in the numbers because I have numbers for those two things. And so I do, 951.6 minus 648.9 newtons, and that gives me a net force of 302.7 newtons. I can now use that net force to find my acceleration using the formula F net equals MA, which I'm doing over there on the left-hand side. So I've got the formula down. I'm going to plug in my numbers. But I've got difficulty. I don't know the mass. So I have to go back to FG equals MG and use that negative 648.9 newtons to find my mass. And by the way, that should be a negative 9.8 because my mass is going to be a positive number. It's always a scalar. Um, so I plug in those numbers and I get a mass equal to 66.21 kilograms. I can now take that 66.21 kilograms, go back up to the other equation on the left-hand side, F net equals MA, plug in all my numbers, and I get an acceleration of... 302.7 divided by 66.21, giving me the number 4.57 meters per second squared. Problem done. And the end of the first four worked problems. Thank you very much for your time.